Hello, hello, hello. Happy Friday and welcome to Speed Bumps Live. I'm Javier Santana. And I'm Shannon Delaney. And thank you everybody for being here with us on this lovely Friday. Fantastic. And by the way, just ending up in October, it'll be November in a few days. Just want to drop that in there. Um, Speed Bumps Live is a recurring web series where we get into real talk with leaders that are navigating today's complex marketing landscape. And uh, we're live on YouTube and LinkedIn. So if you're joining us live, please say hello in the comments and, uh, you know, interact with us while we're doing the show. That's right. And this episode is being recorded and it'll be available on our social channels right after the show. So make sure you hit the subscribe or follow button on whatever platform you're on. Uh, so you can keep up with future shows and be sure to check out our website, speedbumpslive.com. Yeah, and we're also going to be doing live Q&A with our guests towards the end of the show. So please make sure that you put your questions in the comment section as they come to you. We'll just go ahead and hold them toward the end of the show. All right. So, Hav, as if I don't already know, what are we talking about today? Are you sure you know? I don't um, know. So, so today <laughs> uh, we're going to be talking about the power of taking risk and good deeds. Um, there's no better person to talk about this than Adam Walker. And I'll, I'll tell you my personal story with Adam, but Adam is a serial entrepreneur with a passion for giving back. He's a content creator, digital marketer, co-founder of nonprofit 40 and 48. Some of you may have heard of it. Uh, he's he's uh, the host of multiple podcasts, um, Tech Talk Y'all, uh, Real Pink. Um, Adam was also co-founder of Edgewise Media and is currently helping brands create their own content focused on the power of dynamics and podcasting. Um, we're excited to have Adam on the show and hear what he has to say about content creation and what we could learn from nonprofit marketing and more. So Adam, welcome to the show. Hey, it can only go south from here. So uh, <laughs> that's a, that was, that was a really a, good lead up. So strap in, here we go. That, no, no, that's good. And, <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, so it's, it's funny because I, I mentioned this on LinkedIn the other day. Um, you know, you and I are both serial entrepreneurs with crazy ideas all the time. And I have this tendency to sometimes want to bounce ideas off someone. So I'll pick up the phone and be like, hey, Adam, you got a minute? Let's talk. And he'll do the same with me. And we throw around these crazy ideas and just see if they actually stick. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, Adam is somebody that I respect a lot. So uh, so somebody who's really a hardcore risk taker, but also someone who looks at things with a really broad view. This is what I'm looking at right now. And how does it fit into the ecosystem? How does it fit into the life of of the potential user of this product of the pers uh, people that it affects? So uh, so, yeah, Adam, this is really exciting to have you on the show. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. All right, so you have a great backstory. Um, let's talk about how you got started in marketing and specifically how nonprofits came into your world, uh, factored into your beginning. Yeah, well, I uh, I accidentally got started in marketing. That's how I got. I, th I think I've, I think pretty much everything I've actually done has been completely accidental. It would be great to pretend that I did anything on purpose, but I think the few things I've done on purpose are like marry my wife. Like that's that was on purpose, <laughs> but like the rest of it, I'm not so sure about. Uh, <laughs> So I know I, I had a big background actually in nonprofits. That's probably the best place to start. So I actually started my first nonprofit in high school with a bunch of high school friends and we put on youth rallies and we did some service to uh, homeless people experiencing homelessness in little five points. And we just did some other things. And so, um, so a lot of kind of experience just with the nonprofit sector in general, um, have a, a pretty large church background that, that influenced that a lot as well. And so um, when what I was doing wasn't working, I started building websites because I had built websites on the side forever back in GeoCities days, you know, when you wow. would hand code the website and had a GeoCities spot and, and you know, had the, the spinning gifts and all the things. And so, uh, so I, you know, so I was like, well, I, I need some extra income because what I'm doing here isn't working. So I started building websites and that turned into building more websites and that turned into meeting my business partner and building websites with him and passing work from him to me and me to him. And then that resulted in us deciding to finally start an agency and then grow an agency over 10 years. And then that agency get acquired into a larger agency and go from there. So it wasn't intentional. It was a necessity, I think, that drove me into marketing. So, Well, well but that's, that's interesting. I'd, I'd like to, um, and, and this is something I don't know much about. Tell me yeah. about, I'm gonna ask you about two things, specifically nonprofit. One of them is, uh, is that first um, youth-based uh, nonprofit, was that just very like raw and, hey, look, we want to just go do good deeds? Or was it like, hey, guys, let's structure something, let's create something? It was, was it... a little more raw, a little yeah. more like, hey, this seems like a good idea, let's go do this. And then yeah. like, hey, it was, the, it was like the early entrepreneur, like, I'm going to run in this direction, and then I'm going to run in this direction, and then I'm going to run in this, you know, it was a lot, it was a yeah, lot yeah. of that. So, so it's, yeah. it's a lot of learning in, in, uh, in, in real time. And then yeah. you know, a lot some, of things, learning what didn't work in real time, I think, it, it, which right. is, yeah. which is the best way to learn, right? Yeah. Because you yeah. can quickly pivot and shift. Yeah. But, uh, but then, you know, then there's 48 and 48. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and that and was accidental too, I think. Uh, it wasn't <laughs> accidental for my co-founder, Jeff. Jeff was very intentional about it. It was kind of accidental for me. Do you want, do you, do you want me to tell that story as well? Please, please okay, bring it, so, man. So I was, uh, the background there is I was running a web design company, WordPress, WordPress based web design. And I'd gotten to know Jeff Hillemeyer, you know, reasonably well, we were becoming mm -hmm. friends and he had, you know, he was running a big agency and I'm running a tiny agency. And I get a call from him one day and we were, you know, like we're, we're friends, so we're talking, but like, this was kind of an unusual call. And he's like, all right, Adam, I got an idea. It was a kind of, kind of a call like you and I have Javier, you yeah. know, sometimes Adam, I got an idea. I'm like, great. What's your idea? He's like, can we build 10 nonprofit websites in a weekend for free? And I'm like, yes. And he goes, okay, can we build 20? And I'm like, yes. And then he keeps going. Can we build 30? Can we build 40? He finally gets to 50. I'm like, yes, but you have to stop. Like that's, this is getting absurd. Like 50 is the limit. And he's like, all right, we'll back it down to 48. We'll build it in 48 hours. We can call it 48 and 48. And I'm like, okay, you're a genius. That's a great plan. I love this idea. So I was again, accidental. I'm like, yes, I will help you do this. This is your thing, Jeff. I will, I will help you do this. And uh, so he puts together kind of the first committee and he and I start talking about it, you know, a bunch and, and you know, we could do this, we could do it this way, we could do it this way. Here's where we could have it, all this sort of stuff. And he puts together the first kind of like meeting of like the planning team committee, whatever you want to call it. And we, we get there and, and he's like, all right, Adam, you're doing this, I'm doing this. I'm like, great, no problem. Meeting starts and Jeff's like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm Jeff Hillemeyer. This is my co-founder, Adam Walker. And I was like, oh, co-founder, okay. <laughs> well, that works, you know, it's a, that's a new thing. So awesome, let's do that, you know? And, uh, and that's how I accidentally fell into 40 and 48. So that's, there you that's, go. that's a great story. But and, that and for those listening that don't know, just to be clear, right? 40 and 48 yeah. is a nonprofit yes. that hosts events, ideally to build 48 websites in 48 hours for nonprofits. Uh, you can find out more at 48in48.org. Just to also be very clear, I'm on the board. I'm a volunteer now. I do lots of volunteering for 48in48. I'm not on staff. I do not run the organization. It's run by Seema Parekh. Seema is amazing. She is amazing. Um, she does great work. She deserves all the credit for all of the several years of growth that 48in48's had. So just yeah, to, that's, just to that's, be clear. That's, that's incredible. And, you know, yeah. and, and, and you know, kudos to Jeff for identifying that, you know, here's someone who can really make me, you know, help me accomplish this. So... So we got let's it go done. Ahead and get it done. Yeah, Just so barely, but we got it done. <laughs> respect, respect. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was really, it was, it was very. Fun. It's one of the best things I've ever done, for sure. I love it, and I love it. I think the that probably ninety percent of people in marketing, if they wrote a memoir, the title could be "The Accidental Marketer," mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah. How many people really like? I'm going to go to school and come out and be a marketer. I feel like we just kind of almost no one fall it, into it for yeah. various reasons. Right. In, in fact, um, so I have a, I have a podcast, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pol casually mention here called get a word in for content marketers where I interview content marketers and I'm about to release an episode and, uh, I'm, I'm talking with someone that was like, she was like the head of social, I think for MailChimp, no, not MailChimp, sorry. Uh, uh survey monkey at one point, but she started as a librarian and I'm like, how does that wow. even happen? Yeah. Like, how do you go from librarian focused on like helping seniors with library stuff to th that's just wild to me, but it's everybody. Think, I think marketers take very weird paths. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think your story about, you know, your uh, also your accidental promotion. Thanks to Jeff. I think I've had a few of those. Thanks to Jeff too, by the way, just so you know, um, but one of He's the notorious. things, Oh yeah. Uh, one of the things you said when we were talking, you know, before the show that I loved was this idea of uh, people will rally around an insane idea. Oh yeah. You know, when you yeah, talked about sure. 48 and 48 yeah. and you lit up and you said, you know, people will rally around an insane idea. Yeah. Talk a little bit about what you mean by that, you know, yeah. as it relates maybe to 48 and 48, but also, you know, yeah, yeah. other yeah. insane ideas. Maybe you've seen people get so, behind. So, uh, so I'll, I'll start with this. Um, there's a friend of mine, um, a mutual friend. You probably know him too, Danny Davis. Uh, oh here. yeah, I just uh, worked so, with Danny for the last four years so, before I joined lunch. So Danny Davis is amazing. <laughs> and we were at the pool one day where our kids were on the same swim team, and he had a shirt on that said, "That's a horrible idea." What time? And I was like, <laughs> "That is the greatest T-shirt I've ever seen in my entire life." And like, and I think that kind of summarizes this idea. Like, people are. I think they're not captivated so much by horrible ideas, but they're captivated by wild, grandiose ideas. And I think they really love uh, this, this idea of like, I want to show up and just see if you can even make this happen. Like that, I think that's what, what kind of powered the first 48 and 48 is like, Jeff 
uh, and I pitched this grand vision and Jeff had enough credibility in the marketplace to where people believed like he could probably make this happen, but maybe we're not totally sure. So we're going to go and be a part of it and see if it happens. And sure enough, it did happen. You know, and I also think about like the Komen uh, three day walk and like, it's a, like when I first heard about that, I remember thinking that is insane. Like that's an insane amount of miles to walk. Who's going to do that? And of course, thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people do that to, to raise money and, and to raise awareness. Right. And you've, you've done, that's amazing. And so, um, so I think people are captivated by not just the idea of a grandiose idea, but by being a part of that grandiose idea and then seeing how it plays out. Yeah. I think yeah. That, Make, being a part of making a difference, right? Like yeah. It's, it's, yeah. So the challenge and being able to contribute is yeah. I think the, the real. Yeah. Because I, I think thing. when we set the bar too low, I mean, like, like who wants a goal that you're absolutely sure you can meet? Like, I mean, like, like really, like who wants yeah. that goal? Like that just seems so boring, you know, yeah. but like set a goal that you're like, you're not totally sure. Like maybe you're a little nervous about it. Like that's a goal worth going after. Agree. Well, because you change your behavior then too, right? You're not just yeah. going to get up the next day and do the thing the same way you were doing it before. You've got to like strategize differently, think differently. You know, if you're going to go walk 60 miles in three days, you have to plan and train for that. Yeah. So when you kind of get into that mindset of you're going to do something big and crazy from a business perspective, you can't just wake up the next day and take the same approach, right? Right. Mm -hmm. How is it that you think, you know, uh, why is it rather that you think nonprofits are so good at those kind of crazy ideas and building community momentum and how could, you know, a not, you know, regular for-profit business learn from some of that, you think? I think the place that nonprofits really shine are that they see a specific problem, they see a path to a solution for that specific problem, and they get this profound tunnel vision on solving that one specific problem. Now, now that, that does become a liability for nonprofits at some point too, where they're so sure. tunnel vision, they can't see the broader picture and, and other things strong. And honestly, that's why we started 48 and 48, because we realized that nonprofits were so good at doing good and were terrible at looking good. And so we could solve the looking good problem as far as websites goes. Um, but not, I mean, I've seen it time and again, like nonprofits are remarkable in that they can see a problem, they can double down on it, they can put all of the effort into it and all the heart into it, and they can make real progress on fixing that issue. And it's that, it's focus. I mean, that's really what it is, it's focus. And I think a lot of us struggle, I mean, me included, struggle yeah, with focus. Yeah. What, um, so, you know, 48 and 48, when we were talking, you know, it's been over a thousand websites for nonprofits with over 10,000 volunteers and 10 time zones, I mean, it's, it's really gotten big what do you think that community momentum of the actual volunteers like how are those volunteers taking what they're doing in those 48 hours and, and applying them into their companies and their jobs because it is uh, it's not only marketers but it is no. a lot of marketers so how do you see that changing the way they do their job after mm -hmm. they have an experience like that yeah so interestingly enough you kind of actually touched on what the vision or, or the really the mission is for 48 and 48 like really our goal is not so much the nonprofit websites. Really, the goal is to empower volunteers to use their professional skills for good, mm -hmm. and and the and really the reason that uh, that we kind of started this whole thing is because we recognize that there's a lot of marketers with some remarkable, amazing skills that aren't really able to use those skills in an effective manner, or when they do use those skills, they get taken advantage of. Because one of two things happens with a marketer in a nonprofit relationship. One is uh, the marketers stay away from the nonprofits because they don't want to get roped in forever. Or two is they get roped in forever. Like those are the two <laughs> options typically. So we provided a, we provided a time bound finite opportunity for people to serve nonprofits and do good in the world and use their skills. And so my hope to answer your question is that they go back to, you know, IBM and they go back to, to Delta and Verizon and, and Cox, and they go back to all of these, you know, or they are smaller companies, you know, agencies like my agency even, mm -hmm. and they realize they can use the skills that they use professionally to do good in the world. And then they continue doing that on their own. Yeah, that's right. And I, and I, and I won't continue with the 40 and 40, but I will say that I, you know, I have volunteered and I was on a really fun team with Joe Kaufman, which is on with us today. Uh, yeah. Paul Carp hey, Joe. Paul Carpenter and a couple of others. And, and I got to tell you that not only was it extremely gratifying um, and challenging because we're all working together with people that we may not have worked with in the past, but there's a sense of community that you get from it. And then when you see the nonprofits 
um, look at their website for the very first time and, and the smiles on their faces and the impact that they know it's going to make. Highly gratifying. I highly recommend it if you, if, for, for our audience. If you have not been involved, highly recommend you uh, get involved next year. Yeah, I would love that. We always need more volunteers, more teams. We need more nonprofits too. If you know a nonprofit that needs a website, tell them to sign up. It's great. That's a great call. Yeah, that's yeah. a great call. Mm -hmm. That is a great call. Yeah. So um, let's talk about content creation. Um, All right. And uh, you talked a little about creating content that is human first. Um, in the nonprofit space, obviously, that's extremely important, mm -hmm. but also outside in the world of marketing as we know it. Yep. Uh, talk about your approach for storytelling, uh, creating empathy, emotion, um, and also for you know the content that you advise others not to create, right? <laughs> because there's things that we can do really well, and there's just shit that we put out there into the world, man, that is yeah. just noise, right? So yeah. And, and I know yeah. you have so much experience with that, so I, I'd love to hear yeah. your uh, very candid thoughts. <clears throat> yeah, uh, man, I have a lot of thoughts on content. Let's start with good content, right? Okay. Um, so good. So we'll we'll do good content and then bad content. So so good content, as you mentioned, I mean, it's you know Google did this uh, this algorithm update, and they were, and I think they used the term human first content, mm -hmm. and and I think the reality is that that's what's been winning forever. I mean, like like human first content is why TikTok influencers are TikTok influencers, and that's really like that's the best microchasm of, of, of content that you can ever experience is looking at, you know, a, an Instagram influencer or a TikTok influencer and, and seeing like these people are creating either wildly informative content or wildly entertaining content or some combination of the two. Like that's, that's all they're doing. And it's so, so good. Yeah. And then the rest of us marketers were like, well, can we do a white paper about <laughs> Widgets? Like, no, let's not do that. Let's do something like, so, so I think good content is, is ultimately content that, that captures the imagination, that captures the, the thought of the person that's consuming it, whatever that happens to be. So maybe it is a white paper about some, some medical condition for some doctor. Like maybe that's your audience and that's great. But if, if it's not good content helps people, it either helps them by informing them or it helps them by entertaining them. It's, it's one of those two things almost every single time. And so if your content doesn't inform and it doesn't entertain, you, you absolutely should not produce it at all. There's just no point to it. Um, to your question, like, how do you get good storytelling? I think you just have good conversations. I mean, that's why I'm, I do, you know, this kind of podcast first content marketing approach, because I like to have good conversations with good people mm -hmm. that are thoughtful. And so if you can have those good conversations, if you can prepare well for those conversations, and then you can just ask good questions, you can get a lot of good content. Um, bad content? It is content for content's sake. It's it's mm -hmm. writing a blog post because you have to write a blog post. It's creating a video because you have to create a video. I think it's also content. Um, I am, I am someone that absolutely despises jargon of every kind. So I so I, I and, and I say that now realizing I've probably used some, which is going to be terrible. But <laughs> you, you haven't, you haven't. But been, but but I I can't stand jargon. I can't stand it in any industry I've been in. It it creates outsiders and insiders and it's a wall because jargon is not always clear to everybody. And so um, I think content that uses a lot of jargon is a huge problem. I think content that's for content sake, like I mentioned, is a huge problem. I think content that's overproduced and doesn't need to be is a huge problem. Um, mm -hmm. You don't have to have overproduced, highly crazy polished, con you just have to have good content. Like yeah. it's not about the polish, it's about the content. It, it, the, the book jacket design doesn't matter as much as what's inside the book. Fair I think enough. we have two new quotes. Yeah, the jargon first one's, one's really good and obvious. Yeah, it's yeah. good content helps people, but it's, I loved jargon creates insiders, insiders and, outsiders, and outsiders. And it's That's so really true. Great. Yeah, That's really, I mean, it's simple, but it's profound because I think, you know, I, I joke about this all the time. You know, I think when you're in digital, you have a jargon. When you're in an agency, you have a jargon. When you're in certain industries, you have a jargon. And then you just layer all that and you've got mm -hmm. now jargon on jargon on jargon. And then yeah. are you even speaking real sentences I mean, that's when you're why, talking? That's why there are websites that are like like business jargon generator. Like because yeah. there, it's so common that there's a website making fun of how common it is. It yeah. is it's scary. It's <laughs> you, I'll send you a link later. It's there's, scary what you can generate. I've heard these things one. in meetings. Yeah. I've, I've been there. There's You've probably said somewhere. them in meetings, I right? You have. catch yourself to, sometimes to and you're shame. like, what did I even say? I was yeah. gonna say there's, there's actually a, a lipsum generator that's all just oh, like yeah. biz jargon. Oh, yeah. it's, it's brilliant. Oh, really? Yes, oh, yes, I love that. Yes, oh, you're gonna need brilliant. to send me that link later. That's I great. definitely will. Mm -hmm. 
That's hilarious. Well, so I, I love there's this trending theme, right? You know, we talked about getting people behind an idea and, you know, being human first with our content and that good content helps people. So our, you know, our good deeds theme is kind of really paying it off here. Yeah. yeah um, I like that. I'm curious <laughs> though, what about scale? Because, you know, we talked about good and bad, Yeah. yeah. but you got to keep the marketing machine humming. Um, what kind of tips do you have for people when they're creating content in a rapid cycle? Yep that stays human, that stays good, that stays jargon free, you know, what are some thoughts you have on that? Yeah, so I, I, I'll kind of walk through what I, what I consider to be my own content creation process. I think that'll probably be the most helpful. Um, so the first is you have to have really good inputs. If you're gonna create good content, good outputs, you have to have good inputs first. So you have to read a lot. You have to, you have to watch a lot of content. You have to consume good content, not garbage content. If you, right. so to create good content, you've got to consume good content. Like that's step one. Um, because not everybody just wants to know your thoughts. Like that's the other thing too, is like the, there's a lot of influencers out there that are kind of these self-proclaimed experts just because they say they're experts. And I, I just, I can't, I can't be, those guys make me I feel weird about it. I don't, mm -hmm. I, I can't be that guy. Um, I, I share things on social that I'm learning about leadership because I believe that teaching something is the best way to learn it. And I, I try to format it that way. And I try to make it really clear um, that that's my perspective on this. I'm no expert at anything really. So, um, so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is creating, like I, 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 I'm a big believer in creating one big piece of deep, good content. Like we're doing literally right now. Like we're having a good conversation right now. And to your point, Shannon, a minute ago, you mentioned a quote and that quote can become a, a, an Instagram post graphic that can, that quote can become reels. It can become TikTok, a TikTok video. It can become a LinkedIn clip and video. It can become, I mean, literally I can think of 10 different things that can become right now from that one quote. And so that's the easiest, best way to do it is create one big piece of long form content, whatever that is for you. So for me, it's a podcast. It's a video podcast where I'm capturing video and then I create all this content from it for me and for our clients. Um, but for you, it might be a live stream. For somebody else, it might be a white paper. For somebody else, it might be an ebook. Whatever it is, create that, that, lo that long form piece of content and then look for all the best pieces of that and then take out all of those best pieces and turn them into everything else you can imagine. And I mean, honestly, like one podcast can become 15 pieces of content easily. Just one right. episode. This can become, I mean, with this being a longer format, I mean, this could easily become 20 or 30 pieces of content if you want, want it to be. So. I like the theme too in there. And it's so obvious, but the idea being you're meeting people where they're at, you know, you're, we're doing this here in this channel, but we're going to create content from it in a bunch of different places so that regardless if somebody saw the show or not, they yeah. might catch us over on Instagram or over on LinkedIn. Or... Yeah, because so, the, yeah. the ideas are what matter. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Like the, the idea is what matters. The, the, the content you're sharing is what matters. The format or the, the modality of it doesn't matter at all. So you just take it and you make it deliverable to whichever audience you're, you're going for. Well, so you started yeah. to touch on something a little while ago when you were talking about bad content. Um, you kind of creeped up against it and this idea of like overproduction and you, yeah. you had said at one point, perfection is the enemy here. Yeah. What mistakes do you see marketers make when they're creating content on that production scale? What are some common traps? Well, I mean, the, the first trap is not creating content because it's not professional enough, right? I mean, like that's like, that's always the first thing is like, I can't do a video because it won't look good. It'll look fine. Like you have a mm -hmm. smartphone in your hand. It'll look fine. Create your video and keep going, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's the, the first one. Um, I mean, I, I think the second one is just making sure you get good conversations, like you capture good people. I mean, you have to be thoughtful about who you're going to talk with. There are people that might be very intelligent that you might not want to have on a show, uh, certainly not a live show, right? So you have to, I mean, you know better than most, right? You have to be careful about that. So I think that's part of it as well. Um, I, I mean, really, it, to me, it's, it's just the just do it mentality. It's the Nike like you just have to do it. Right. Well, I think it's easy to overthink it too, right? You know, you're, especially in social media where the content is, dare I say, almost disposable because it's yeah. such a moment yeah. in time right. um, to overthink, you know, what is somebody going to think about this one thing for just this moment that might scroll yeah. by in their feed? So yeah. I do think that overthinking is part of that. Uh, yeah, I mean, that it's perfection the curse. 
paralysis right. by analysis, right? Like mm-hmm. don't, don't get paralyzed. Just, I mean, and I think like the, the beauty of content marketing in general is just create a bunch of different stuff and see what works. Like mm-hmm. it, there's no harm in it. Like you're yeah. not, you're like, you're not hurting yourself by putting a video on YouTube that no one watches. Like there's no harm, <laughs> in it, right? Like it doesn't, like there's no loss, you know, there's no downside. Yeah. So Sounds like a conversation it? I was having with Hob this morning. I don't know, <laughs> yes. right? Yes. Yes. yes, it does, yes it does. Yeah, uh, you, yeah. Can, you can send me that $5 gift card later, Shannon. <laughs> Thanks, Shannon. <laughs> I did not plant this. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Uh, you, but by the way, speaking of, uh, you know, serial entrepreneurs and nonprofits and quotes and ideas, here's an idea in real time. As Adam, you're talking about quotes and quotes and quotes. I'm thinking to myself, you know what? We've had some really incredible guests that uh, Paul used to call T-shirt moments. Mm-hmm. That, you know, that's a really great quote. We just slapped that on a, on a T-shirt. Yep. Yep. I think we should definitely do those, put them on T-shirts, mugs, and then... Whoever purchases one, a uh, large percentage of that will go to the guest uh, who who created the quote uh, to their nonprofit of choice. Perfect. That like that's right? a great idea because there's, there's, there's almost there. it's got to happen now. Yeah, there's it's almost fine. no reason not to do it because it's so easy to create like these stand up shops and the like cafe okay. press store. Yeah, like yeah, cafe press. Like it yeah. take it'll take you what yeah. thirty minutes to stand that up. So yeah. it's, that's great. That's great. And a lot of great yeah. non, uh, nonprofits, specifically here in Atlanta, that we mm-hmm. we all volunteer with. So that's. Uh, Hey, that's sign my, me up that, and send my t-shirt sales to 48 and 48. We'll call it good. That's so. the idea that you have inspired today. <laughs> Tomorrow will be a different one. Let me know um, when I can buy it on Monday. We'll, you got we'll it. Talk you got it. Right. So, now now yeah. you're putting pressure for Monday. Okay. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> I'll on be time. working all weekend. Hey, he can do 48 websites in 48 hours. Yeah. You can do one the, in a day. Yeah. That's again. what I'm saying. One t-shirt design. You're good to go. Come on. Just stand up. You got this. You got this. kicked around. He just rallied you around his insane idea. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. That's incredible. I like it. Well, well, speaking of of quotes, uh, you know, here's another great quote that you said. Um, Last time we spoke, and this was in regards to 40 and 48, you said, solid systems speed things up. Mm -hmm. Right? Talk a little bit more about what you mean and how that applies to the audience today. Yeah, I mean, I I think... I think a lot about systems. If you haven't read uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear, that's probably like a, an interesting place to start because habits are essentially just systems that mm-hmm. you, you know, at a, at a micro level. Um, but in order to create the amount of content that my team needs to create for our clients, we've got to have like incredibly clear processes and incredibly clear systems um, and, incred- and incredibly clear handoffs. And so we've created that. So it, it makes it easier for kind of a, a small but mighty team to take one podcast episode and turn it into 15 pieces of marketing content mm-hmm. and then to distribute that out to the client appropriately. And, and I'm, I'm becoming more and more of a big believer in that in kind of like every area of life. Like, so for example, um, I'm trying to get back to, I, t- I took a few weeks off, but I need, I'm getting back to my own personal content creation. And so I set aside Wednesdays as a content day for me. So I don't do any meetings at all Wednesday, zero meetings, like ever, never, never, never will I take a meeting on Wednesday, unless it's for a sale, a sale. And I will, I will sell you something on a Wednesday, but <laughs> otherwise uh, I'm not meeting on a Wednesday. And, um, and, and I use those days to create content. And so I, I look at all of my ideas and I go through and I start, I record videos or I record long form videos or whatever else. And then I create content from those and, and cut it all up uh, on Wednesdays. And I've got kind of a, a set process I use to expedite that. And then I can drip it out, you know, the rest of the week as well. So, um, so I think it works in, with teams. I think it works with individuals. Um, one thing that I'm also learning about that I'll mention too is I had a, I had a really interesting com- conversation with a new friend uh, this week. And he was talking about how he's taking golf lessons. And his golf instructor that's been a golf instructor for you know, 30 years was telling him how you, you've got to learn how to get your swing down. And then you have to automate it. And then you have to do it without thinking. And then you have to stop tweaking it so you don't mm-hmm. break it. And like, that's another important part of like creating a, an automation, creating a system is you, you create the system, you optimize the system, you see that the system is working well, and then you stop messing with it so it can do its thing and you move on to something else so you don't break it. Uh, I think that's also important. Yeah, that that's good. really outstanding. So put a plan in place, stick to it, put the right people in place and and keep moving on, man. I love and, it. Well, and, and then trust people too. Like trust yeah. the system and trust the people. Like I, I don't know, I, I know too many people that have a hard time letting go and and 
and just like Shen is laughing just, because that's that's I'm, me a little bit. I'm not talking I'm, about you. I'm, huh? I'm, I'm, not, I'm yeah. shrinking. I'm, I'm shrinking into yeah. screen and you're saying it. <laughs> just getting lower and lower. Yeah, but I mean, but you have to just trust the people. Like, yeah, and and I will. I, I know. I know that can be scary, and it can come back to bite you in certain situations. But ultimately, I mean, it's the it's the way to be the most effective is to trust the people and move forward, or trust the system to move forward. That's it's great. just funny. We had a fun conversation this morning. Yeah. So it's like you're just channeling these thoughts. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting kicked around like. Like you don't even know it. No, okay. I'm just kidding. I'm just so kidding. If we were second in the room, card? I'd be kicking yeah. him under the table right now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah so totally. Like you're it. you're like gotcha. at a new level. You're like the gold status. I'm oh like a goodness. I'm like a, a, a work a work team therapist here. Um, yeah, yeah. Live. That's it's a new business model that I'm launching today. Right now on the work show. team oh. therapy from Adam dot com. I'm going to stand it up. It's gonna be what great. you don't know is Hob just bought the URL, so mm. you can't yeah, have yeah, it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably did. I'm sure. I'm sure Adam, you probably have like 50 domains. I'll just I'll do like hat guy therapy dot com that'll be fine that guy so, therapy yeah. i like it yeah i like it well in in order to salvage my sanity let's do a time check yep. and uh it looks like we're right at the uh, so i think that it might be time for us to start looking at our audience for some q a yeah let's do, do it. Love it sounds great i love let's it while it. you bring our moderator on there is a quick question from uh, joe kaufman wants to know how many fedoras and or vests does this guy own <laughs> I had to so, do it, Adam. I'm sorry. I, I, no, no, that's a great question. <laughs> so, a couple strange. things you need to know. Like, there, there's, there's two things that I probably should have mentioned at the top of the hour. Number one is I do always wear a fedora. Number two is I've, I've got a million kids. I got five kids. Like, that's, I'm known for those things, really. Um, <laughs> and I, I try. I used to have a lot of different fedoras, and like, and I would wear them and then swap them out. And I had like a blue one and a brown one and a straw one. But I realized like over time, like that's diluting my brand. So it's the marketing guy coming out of me. Like that's diluting my brand to have different fedoras. <laughs> so I went to one particular company, one particular type of fedora and, and I swapped between uh, a straw one in the summer and then uh, a felt one in the winter. And that's that. So I own quite a few, but I only wear like three. Like so what you're saying is it's officially yeah. winter though, because you're in the felt one. Oh yeah. So, oh okay, yeah. Yeah, it. for sure. Yeah. This, this reminds me of uh, the fly when uh, Gina Davis's character Ask Jeff Goldblum, do you, you're wearing the same clothes. Do you ever change? And he's like, I change every day. She goes in a closet and it's the same exact outfit every single day. <laughs> hey, that's the, that's the whole personal <laughs> uniform idea. Like, I love that idea. I just can't, I, I haven't been able to pull the trigger on that, but I love a, the concept of it. Hey, you consistency know? is the key, my yeah. friend. Yeah. It's like a true marketer staying on brands. It's we love brand. that. You gotta, you gotta be branded. You gotta <laughs> right. be branded. Yep. Hi, Kayona. Awesome. Hello. Hey. Shannon, you stole my thunder. That was going to be the oh, first sorry. question. I was going to grab it. <laughs> listen, listen, Joe knows me well. He's seen he's seen this same fedora many times. So what about vest? I only own one vest, Joe. I got one vest. I keep it clean, but I got one vest. I'm not wearing it today. It's just the one. It, it got dirty, vest. so you had to wash it. I need I need more vests, actually. That's that's something I do need more of. So that's the next one. The yeah. next on-brand item. Yeah, that's there it. You yeah. Go. That's great. <laughs> Awesome. Well, glad to be here, Adam. We probably me. have more lives with you because the ideas that are just popping off of this one yeah. one stream is crazy. You got like Shannon it. and Hav fired up. I got it. Good. <laughs> Can't wait to see what comes from it. Right. Perfect. All right. So we're going to start with our first audience question. This one comes from Sophia on our team. And she is asking, are there any favorite content creation brainstorming techniques that you have and would love to share? I mean, honestly, the best thing that I do um, is... I set aside, I try to set aside a good, I mean, even just 15 minutes to read a thought provoking book um, or, that's similar to the content cre that I want to create. And I, I highlight it in my Kindle and then I come back and check my highlights and see, do I want to create some content based on that idea? Of course, always citing the author. Um, I do the same thing with audiobooks. So I'll listen to a ton of audio, like I'm walking the dog, listening to an audio book. And, and I, I use the audio clip feature for that to just kind of bookmark content in there to come back to and create additional content from. Um, or, you know, I mean, in the, in the kind of daily email newsletter reading I do, like I use pocket, um, get pocket.com and send stuff there and then, and then pull it back out. Nice. Right. Love that. It's all about cool. the, Sorry, you got to capture the good content you find so you can right. do derivative works based on it. Cause I'm not intelligent enough to create content from scratch. So. <laughs> Feel like an artist. I read that book and I love it. And I bring it up all the time to you, Shannon, just. Take little things. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it. I have it back here yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so we have another question from Joe, but this one's a, a good one. He said, mm. in all seriousness, <laughs> how can we infuse more doing good when our larger goal is profit? It's mm. a good one. That's a really yeah. good question. Yeah, that's heavy. so that, yeah, it is a heavy question, but it's a good one. Um, 
I'll say that. I mean, it, I, that's a hard one to answer in some ways because it, it really depends on what your business is and depends on what sort of what you sell and who the people are. Um, I will say I've, I've never in my life been sorry for doing good. So I, I guess I would start there. And, and I would say that often, not every time, but often I could trace the doing good to additional good that happens to me. And sometimes that comes in the form of, of revenue or profit or whatever else. I mean, like, I mean, even like, even this conversation is a microcosm of that, of that explanation. Like, because mm -hmm. I met Jeff, because he uh, tricked me into co-founding a nonprofit with him <laughs> um, is why I met all of you essentially, really uh, what directly led to that, which, you know, which directly leads to this show, which could, who knows, directly lead to clients or, or whatever else. So, um, yeah, I, th I think it's always indirect almost, but it's always worth it. Well, and, and let me add something really quick because something yeah. you said, um, because I met Adam quite some time ago, I barely remember. He actually interviewed me for his podcast and, uh, and that had a little bit to do with the inspiration for the show, by the way, which mm. I told you that before, Adam. Yeah, so, man. So yeah, go Thanks. figure. Go full circle. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 and the more we put ourselves out there, the more we connect with more people, typically the better our opportunities become, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's just human nature because you know, more people, more opportunities present themselves to you. It's kind of like that concept. Uh, there was a study done where, uh, this is one of my favorite studies ever where this, the studier, the interviewer asked people, are you a lucky person or an unlucky person? Mm -hmm. And they chose, and then they said, okay, um, read this, take this newspaper and I want you to count the number of images you see in this newspaper. So they're, you know, they start flipping through the newspaper and, and we're going to time you. So whoever can do it fastest wins. So they're, they're flipping through counting the images as fast as they can. And the lucky people were able to do it. I mean, insanely faster than the unlucky people. And the reason is the lucky people are looking for opportunity. And so when they opened the first page of the newspaper, they saw a, a large block that said, stop reading. There are 43 images in this newspaper. And so they closed the newspaper and said, there's 43 images and they were done. The unlucky people were not open to that opportunity, did not see that, that advertisement and kept counting. And then they kept flipping and kept counting, kept flipping, kept counting. And so I think that kind of applies in a lot of ways for doing good and how we put ourselves out there. I mean, the more we're out there, the more opportunity we have for other good things to happen. I love that answer. <laughs> and awesome. I, yeah, that's great. I think sometimes doing good yeah. as a marketer can be as simple as you're advocating for, you know, you go back to your idea of good content helps people. Sometimes you have to do good by advocating for who the customer is inside of an organization yes. because yep. it's so easy for an organization to get in the trap of wanting to say what it wants to say about itself mm -hmm. and not as much about what the end user or the yep. end customer needs to know or, you know, has questions about. So yep. I think it can be that simple, just advocating as, yep. as like the, the simplest form of doing good that if you do it right, we'll have a uh, revenue implication too. So, you know, 100%. that's my, that's my really easy punt answer. So I like it. I like it. <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah. Love that. Cool. Okay. So the next one we have is from Liz. She asked, how do you balance authenticity in messaging while also staying focused on achieving metric goals? Uh, I practice authenticity by oversharing. That's my typical, <laughs> that's like my go-to. <laughs> I, I tell people like, it's funny. I tell people during the sales process, I'm like, look, I'm going to play poker with my cards facing out just so you know. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, I think, I, I think you just have to be who you are. Uh, and, and, and to some degree you have to let, let the cards fall where they fall because of that. Um, and, and then ideally, being who you are plays into your business goals, right? Um, mm -hmm. If you're if you're in the right position, if you're pointed in the right direction, and if you're doing the right things, um, and if if being authentic to yourself doesn't point you in the right business direction, that might be a different conversation. But for me personally, in my microcosm of experience, um, being myself has always worked to point me in the right direction of business goals. So yeah. even I mean even honestly, sometimes when I've had to like tell a client like we're not a good fit for you, like this sure. is not this is not the place for you. And that, and even that can come back and, and turn into good things sometimes. Yeah, I would agree. And also, um, I would add, you know, you, you say stay authentic is just being yourself, right? The moment that you stop doing that and trying to cater to a very specific audience, then automatically that's just going to be so obvious that you're being authentic. Yep. So then I, that's one of those things. You just got to stay true to who you are, your goal, your message, I you know, I will say like, there are probably a few people that can be inauthentic and make a sale and be, and be inauthentic sure. and lead. Like there, there, there are some, 
some people out that can pull that. I, I'm not one of them. I think most people are not one of them. And mm -hmm. if you think you're one of them, you're almost definitely not one of them. So right. I, I just, you, you're always better off being authentic. Nice. So going along with authenticity and you're talking about good content and bad content, are there any brands that you think do good, good content, I guess? Who's doing it well? What are your top people? <laughs> what are my top people? Well, I mean, I always love Patagonia, right? I mean, yeah. Patagonia is like, like, I mean, they're, they're in the news constantly for what they're doing for a reason. Um, and they're on a mission. I mean, some of the best content I've ever seen nonprofit or for-profit is, um, is, oh, oh, what's it called? Uh, the well company. What's the charity water, charity water, mm -hmm. um, just unbelievable marketing. I mean, if you want a masterclass in marketing of any kind, go to check out what charity water is doing. It's just remarkable. Um, so I think those are the two brands that sort of immediately come to mind. Um, I mean, there are other brands like I, I like Nike's Colin Kaepernick, you know, commercial yeah. and, and kind of that approach. I feel like that's a very authentic, edgy um, stand that they're willing to take at that moment. It made me want to just buy some Nikes, you know, when they did it. Um, and so and it, which I'm sure is kind of the point. But nonetheless, right, it's authentic. I don't think it was faked either. Yeah, I don't so, think it was faked at all. I think that's yeah. just who they've always been. They've been yeah. always just true to who they are, not yeah. trying to be anybody else. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And, and I think that's a good thing. I mean, I think even now, um, Adidas dropping, you know, the, the Yee, uh, yeah. I think was a, I think maybe it was a little late and they probably should have done that about a week earlier, yeah. but you know, at least they're, they're getting there. So, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because there's, there's this like fine line between, you know, staying true to who you are as a very big brand and getting too heavily involved in social issues. Yep. And I think that some of those brands, uh, just go way over the top. Yep. And then you got brands like Patagonia that are doing it right because that's just yep. their core values and that's what they really authentically speak to. So it's always interesting to see when some um, some brands go over the line and yeah. it's very obvious yep. that they're doing it just because, hey, we got to say something or we're going to lose sales. Yep. And that sucks, man. I hate, I hate seeing that. It just, you know. Well, also, like, I think, of, I think of REI too. Like, REI does a really good job. Like, I think of their ads about being closed for uh, Thanksgiving and Black Friday, I, I think mm -hmm. maybe. And, and I just, mm -hmm. was so impressed with that approach. Yeah. And, and it's, it's like they care about their people. And we're, this is why we're doing this. And they're not, they weren't showy about it. They weren't um, high and mighty about it. They're just like, this is who we are. This is what we do. This, you know, this is how it is. Mm -hmm. That's great. That ties into our conversation with uh, Joanne Harold last month when she was right. talking about your brand purpose <clears throat> and keeping your core core yeah. values, core missions, bringing that forward. So all of this is great. Joanne's the best. Yeah, she's really great. That was a, that was a really great conversation. Awesome. How are we doing, Kay? Do you have any more questions from the audience? We do not have any more questions from the audience right now. I think you did so great throughout the rest of the show. Everyone's like, well, you answered my questions. So we're good to go. <laughs> Adam's a great guest. I, I feel like every time we, we talk to Adam, I have like a list of questions I'm asking him. And then by the first uh, five minutes, he's already answered like seven of my 10. So it's uh, that's, I have that's a, I have case. a bad habit of being overly brief sometimes. <laughs> I think that's so. actually really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. Well, you know, um, Kay, thanks for joining us. Appreciate doing the Q&A. And uh, we'll see you later. Yeah, thanks. That and, uh, you know, we used to ask a lot of the, we used to ask our guests about um, books specifically. And then mm -hmm. we stopped doing it because I feel like sometimes people are caught off guard. Like, ah, I really haven't read anything good. But you obviously are a very avid reader. Yeah. You've already dropped a couple of them. Yep. Um, uh, let's reiterate those. And any other books that you think, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, content, content marketing, just uh, purpose and everything else that we've talked about, um, what yep. are some of the books that you recommend? Uh, so if you don't mind, I'll, I'll recommend some books and a few other things. Um, and, so, and plug your podcast as well, because I want, yeah, uh, I want our absolutely. audience to. Yeah, to I will. Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, for books uh, to start with, I mean, I think Atomic Habits is so important for every leader to read. It, it's it's really well done. Um, there's another one uh, by Charles Duhigg. I think it's called the, what's it called? It's something related to habits. It's good, but Atomic Habits, I think is probably better. Mm -hmm. um, there's, uh, let's see, the, what did I say? The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. I'm reading right now, which is just profoundly amazing. Mm -hmm. um, just really, really impactful and really well done. Um, I like biographies, oddly enough. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's biography was autobiography was shockingly uh, entertaining and motivating. Um, right. Don't necessarily love him all around as a person, mm -hmm. but um, somebody that was able to dominate in so many industries so effectively mm -hmm. is probably somebody I can learn something from. Um, so it was like a, I think it's like a 24 hour audio book. I mean, it was long, but man, it was, it was interesting and fascinating. So that, that comes to mind. Also um, extreme ownership 
um, is another really, really important one for me. Uh, for podcasts, I mean, so I, I have a content marketing podcast. I mentioned that earlier. It's called mm -hmm. Get A Word In. And uh, it's called that because my marketing company is called edgewise.media. Mm -hmm. So uh, so get a word in by edgewise. Come on, that's pretty great. Um, so That's um, really great. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so if you search for get a word in on any of your podcast platforms, you'll find it. And I've just started, so I've got two episodes out right now. Um, one of them is with uh, one of the content marketers from Evernote. The other one is with uh, another content marketer from another unicorn out in the valley that I, don't, I haven't even heard of. There's so many unicorns, who even knows? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm about to release an episode from somebody, uh, an interview with somebody at Pinterest pretty soon and a couple of other really interesting people. So uh, more to come there. So if you know any content marketers, you can send my way. Let's, let's have a chat. Fantastic. Um, and then, uh, I mean, I guess those are all the things that immediately come to mind. I mean, if you want some technology news, I got my podcast, Tech Talk Y'all. I'd love for y'all to listen to that. So uh, that's always always great. Tech Talk Y'all is always a lot of fun. And of course, my website, I guess I should share my website, is adamjwalker.com. If you want to mm -hmm. connect with me, get to know me, I've got a newsletter that I send out. You can sign up. Um, I got all links to my social profiles and everything else there and links to my company websites. So I've got a, co a couple of companies that I'm trying to grow right now. So. Fantastic. Well, and I have a question for you as we're as we're moving into the official season of gratitude and, you know, people thinking about self-reflection and have they done enough this year to help others? How can people get involved in 48 and 48 if they're interested? Uh, so, yeah, go to 48and48.org. Um, there's a volunteer sign up uh, page on there that you can sign up for. There's not any an event coming up immediately. There's I think the next event is probably next March. But there's lots to do in the meantime. So you can go and, and sign up to be on a committee, be on a planning committee. There's a lot of like infrastructure that we're working on building right now. We're working on creating some of the courses that our nonprofits go through in order to be prepared for the event. So you could potentially help create those courses. Like there's a lot of work to be done. So if you want to volunteer, just reach out there. We'd love to have you. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, Excellent. my pleasure. Well, Adam, as always, such a pleasure, man. Yes, it's great. Like, I feel like we could talk for days at a time, man. So appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us. This has been fantastic. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, just let's uh, let's let's keep talking. Um, we'll push out a newsletter here shortly. The show is live, but it's going to go immediately to YouTube. Great. So I think that uh, we'll go ahead and uh, with the newsletter, go ahead and send out some of those links and make sure that everybody takes a moment to uh, dig into the books or into your sites and Let's keep the community going. Let me know when I can buy that T-shirt too. You got that's it, brother. <laughs> Monday, Monday. Yeah, that's right. Apparently, Monday. Yeah. He's got cool. forty-eight hours. What's he complaining about? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Just one guy. Forget it. And if awesome. uh, for the people watching, if you like today's show, be sure to check us out on uh, Speed Bumps Live and all the socials. And uh, once it's available, take a moment to share the show with your community and get the word out about how other marketers can do some good deeds with their marketing needs, right? Good deeds and marketing needs. Right. I know, right? All right, y'all. Well, thank you so much. Um, you know, we'll be back soon with another uh, excellent guest, uh, more honest conversations and more inspiration to help you on your own road to success. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you for joining. Cheers. Mm -hmm.